Mountain Dew. Do the do. We weren't expecting that. Oh! Oh! You just blew it out of the water. AGT Tuesdays, followed by Dancing With Myself on NBC. The most tempting part of your week is guaranteed to be Subway and Chili's Lunchbox Hours. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Breeze 93.9 FM. Catch the greatest hits of your lifetime from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the 2000s while you grub on a mouth-watering Subway footlong sandwich or tantalizing flavors you love from Chili's. Your Lunchbox Hours brought to you by Subway and Chili's. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on The Hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com. Special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime. Plus, live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News, your news leader, the voice of the Marianas. Watch Mariana's artists, activists, and visionaries and their quest to protect, preserve, and promote our Chamorro culture on The Culture Club, a weekly feature on KUAM News Digital Platform and the KUAM News Weekend Edition. Culture Club is brought to you by Tropical Ice, the purest, cleanest ice in Guam. The Culture Club, winner of the 2022 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Can't take life for granted. It's great to be back. Oh my goodness! Flying high as ever. This is my year. We can do this together. American Ninja Warrior Mondays on NBC. This special edition is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. For the 78th Liberation Day Parade, it will be led by someone many of the island's faithful look to in their times of need, GBB President Carl Gutierrez. Kukalay and Kamalin is the patron saint of Guam, is the queen and grand marshal of this year's Liberation Parade. She is now first and foremost beside the, the, the grand and the uh, I'm, I'm sure that you people would agree. Mayor's Council of Guam President Jesse Alec says it just makes sense. We feel that as a historical icon, as a historical figure for us in, in our Chamorro culture, it was important that we remember that she was a part of our history during the war, and she was a part of our history during this COVID pandemic, and that she helped us get through both the war and the pandemic. And so the reason for her being so prominent in these liberation festivities is such that she truly is our grand marshal. She truly is the the the, the, the person that most of most Chamorros relied on uh, with with faith and through prayer that we overcame our atrocities of war and the COVID pandemic. Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio during the Liberation Day press conference on July 1st said that Santa Maria Camelin is the unifier of Guam. She has watched over our island and has shepherded us through all sorts of calamities. Uh, and unfortunately, the one calamity that she didn't um, get to protect us from is that year that the legislature abolished her uh, her uh, uh, feast day as a holiday. And the Manamku quickly uh, made sure that uh, the legislature re returned that holiday. Not only, of course, is it a holiday uh, for a patron saint, but that holiday is so significant because that is when one of the most, um, in one of the, the most difficult periods that our people have faced was started on that day. Today, Santa Maria Camelin continues to watch over the island. Half a day and good morning, Guam. Good morning, world, wherever you are watching this from. You may be watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, or on KUM TV 8. We are coming to you live from the capital of Haganya downtown, where we as an island community and as an island family, as a global Guam family, celebrate the 78th Liberation Day. I'm Jason Salas, and on behalf of all of us on the KUM production team, we welcome you to today's coverage 
of the 78th Liberation Day Parade, the festivities. It is a very obviously, wherever you are on Guam, you probably looked outside and saw how unfortunate the weather is. You know, it's, it started raining maybe about 45 minutes ago. It is not let up. Weather indications may indicate. Half a day. Buenas, everybody. Half a day. <laughs> These are all my friends. These are my family members. We are celebrating, as I said, liberation all together. These are our friends at PBS Guam who are very generously allowed us to use their tarp right now. So thank you guys. All right. We love you guys. So my my, my semi-wet shirt loves you guys too. My shirt would be a lot more wet if it wasn't for you guys. Yes, but but our colleagues, our brothers and sisters over at PBS are carrying the parade right now. Our producer Betty Ann Guerrero has a lot of fans, obviously, from PBS too. It's a big party here, but you know. The parade coverage, of course, being brought to you by KUM. Our friends at PBS Guam are carrying it on their YouTube channel, too. So we are going to show you the sights, the sounds, the floats, and there are 39 of them. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. And the festivities, the celebration, the remembrance, the victory, everything that goes into Liberation Day on Guam. This is, as I've said all week on the hotspot, this is probably our second or third most important holiday on the Guam, second only to Christmas and or Easter. This is a huge, huge moment in Guamanians worldwide. It is our obligation to give back, to take a few moments to celebrate, to gather, to remember what a wonderful time it is for Liberation Day. All right, for those of you who are watching right now and want to know what's up with the floats, there are, as I said, 39 floats. There are Gulf Guam floats, federal government floats, uh, village floats, obviously, uh, organizational floats from both the public sector, the private sector, and we are going to show you as many of them as we can. And we also want to mention that we have, for the first time ever, a People's Choice Contest. It's interactive. So a little bit after 12 o'clock, you're going to be able to go onto our Facebook timeline at facebook.com slash KUM News. And you can vote by liking the picture. And you can do one or more of them. But the float that does have the most Facebook likes is going to be this year's People's Choice winner. You may also see I have here a commemorative white handkerchief that's being passed out. This was produced by uh, the Guam Visitors Bureau, of course. In commemoration, you can probably see on my shirt right now because the Grand Marshal is none other than Santa Maria and Camelin, our island's patroness, our blessed mother, um, the, the literal spirit and the embodiment of what it means to be Guamanian. She is always watching over us. She never lets us down, and she has been selected, our blessed mother has, uh, as the Grand Marshal this, year, uh, this year's parade. And as such, you know, as is customary, uh, the Blessed Mother was uh, a blessing was given down at Adloop, maybe about a mile and a half up the road at the governor's chambers, way up in Adloop. We're here downtown, uh, just outside on the footsteps of Chamorro Village. But these uh, commemorative white handkerchiefs were being passed out, and when Santa Maria and Camelin does make her glorious uh, entrance past the grand stage right here, um, everybody, you are going to see Guamanians, probably a lot of people who are doing this for the first time. You're going to see devout Catholics or just proud Guamanians will be waving these um, these handkerchiefs uh, in deference to our Blessed Mother in, as, as a sign of universal respect, as a sign of love, um, giving back to she most high, she most holy, and she who always watches over us, as I said. Uh, I'm being told that the, the blessing was already given, as I said, down to Adloop. The Blessed Mother is making her way. She is the very first float, and when she stops in front of the grandstand here, um, the parade will have officially begun. Uh, a... Speaking of prayers and blessings, one was given maybe about uh, 15 minutes ago. Right across the street from me, there is the Marine uh, Memorial statue and the literal symbol of the United States Marine Corps and the unbelievably heroic and virtuous and valorous men who took the beach uh, down at Assen 78 years ago. It was their mission to come and liberate Guam from Japanese occupation, and they did just that. So we, uh, we as Guamanians always have such reverence and such a tight-knit relationship to our friends in the United States Armed Forces. Uh, so the blessing was given and the prayer was given at the Marine Monument about 15 minutes ago. And as I said, Santa Marine Camelin on her way down here to the grandstand. But in the days leading up to this year's Liberation Parade, uh, at very, very hallowed ground throughout the island, memorials were held. And we're going to show you first memorials that were held at the Kalaguac and Inalahan sites. Here's that story. On a rainy Friday morning, retired Colonel Joseph Moffner stood on a small patch of concrete hidden in the Tizan jungle. There, he remembered the cave he hid in with other children during World War II, avoiding the eyes of Japanese soldiers. He couldn't recall how many babies and children died at Kalaguac, only that their parents did everything they could to keep them alive. 
If you are around here at 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning or mid-afternoon, you can hear babies crying and rooster crowing. It can be heard, although it can be seen, but they hear in spirit. When you feel the wind blowing, the spirit of the dead can be felt. Friday's memorial ceremony drew other World War II survivors together with residents, including Barragada Mayor June Bloss, who recounted the horror and cruelty that happened in the area nearly 80 years ago. Here in Calagua is where the Japanese forced Archimoro peoples to construct the airfield by hand. The unmentionable atrocities thousands suffered here. Many women were forced to do things without their consent. They were slapped and raped. Men and women were beaten, tortured, and many also died here. That airfield isn't just a remnant of the past. It serves as the foundation of today's busy airport runway. As painful as it is, we have learned to learn to forgive and how to live in peace and in dignity. Personally, I vow to continue to maintain and uphold this memorial to fulfill my promise and never forget. And to ensure that the suffering and tragedies that happened here will be memorialized in an appropriate, in an appropriate manner and honor the people that were here and that their stories to be told for all generations to come. The Memorial Park is a symbol of remembrance, respect, friendship, goodwill, and most of all, peace. The ceremony wrapped up with brief presentations from the War Survivors, Office of the Governor, Consul General of Japan, and the Barragat of Municipal Planning Council. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. It was a sunny but windy Wednesday morning in Inalohan as war survivors, their families, island residents, military partners, and local government leaders gathered to recognize the lives lost during World War II. Dozens sat underneath white canopies as the program went on for the Inalohan War Memorial Ceremony across Bear Rock. According to Inalohan Mayor Anthony Chargloff, it was the area's travel route but also later became a resting ground for war victims who were forced to march to Manegan. After hearing the Menengan took a hit, they turned back seeking refuge south. Diana Menu San Nicolas, who will be turning 78 tomorrow, was among the crowd of attendees. She told KUAM News that she was just seven days old when Guam was liberated from the Japanese occupation of Guam. Nearly eight decades ago was times of uncertainty for many Guam residents like her mother, who gave birth to San Nicolas on July 14, 1944. Hearing the island being free from Japan's armed forces a week after San Nicolas was born, her family were optimistic about their future. They were happy when uh, the information came that uh, the war is over. So finally they had to go back home. It's still in Malolo because they're staying, you know, like mostly like farming. Yeah. That's where we get our lives, uh, the farm, and we build uh, a house that is good to us for us to be sheltered, right? That's uh, until later on when they started improving it. As San Nicolas shared her story with KUAM News, Zina San Nicolas Ruiz, who is 55 years old, her daughter, appeared emotional. Ruiz explained why. My mother never, never was very forthcoming with um, her birthplace, which is Podestas, because it's a cave and it's not a clean place. And so, so, those times, we didn't really go into it because, you know, um, it didn't seem that it, it was something that we should be knowledgeable about. But as I got older and I understand, you know, the survive, what, what it means to be a survivor, I told her she is a survivor. If she didn't survive, I wouldn't be here. It is our story as Chumar people and it needs to be told and it needs to be in, in books and it needs to be understood. Meanwhile, it's history in the making for the beautiful southern village of Inalohan. During the ceremony, the memorial site's design was unveiled with the goal of completing the construction project by December of this year. Half a day, 78th Liberation Day Parade has literally just kicked off. As you can see right now, the Grand Marshal uh, Santa Maria Carmelin has just made its way right now. And it's about to go stop and right in front of the, the, the Grand uh, podium over there uh, for the blessing and as you can see as Jason was talking about earlier there were uh, towels being passed around uh, courtesy of GVB and its uh, sponsors uh, and, and it's literally just for this um, this moment right here where people 
where people are are literally paying uh, respects to our our our, our, our patron uh, saint uh, Santa Maria Carmelin as she's making her way right now uh, towards uh, the main stand here. And as you can see, uh, right in front there, we see uh, we have the Lieutenant Governor, of course, the Governor uh, with her dignitaries uh, paying their tribute uh, to uh, the our. Um, Grand Marshal uh, Santa Maria Carmelin, as you can see, uh, everybody right now doing uh, waving the towels and, and show of respect right here at the 78th uh, Liberation Day. We did, and I know uh, Jason was talking about this in the package that the reason why we chose her to be the uh, the, the Grand Marshal is because of what we've gone through, and she has always been there for us, and she's always uh, she's always pulled through, and she's always protected us through through all the things that, that Guam has been through, through history and time, uh, she's always been there. So that is why uh, coming out of COVID-19, I think and they had her as the uh, Grand Marshal, as a show of, 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 of respect and a show that we still believe in, in, in her and, and what she's done uh, for the island. So we're right here right now, as you can see, as dignitaries are, are, are paying their respects with flowers. And, and you saw earlier with the, 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 the white towels, they're waving. So uh, right now, as you can see, she is the first uh, float in the parade. So the parade has literally just begun. And like I said, as, you, as we pan around, you can see uh, we're hearing lovely music from, from uh, Jess, uh, the one and the only Jess and Ruby. And uh, we see uh, Ding Terry's both from uh, local and military uh, uh, are here uh, paying their respects to uh, our Grand Marshal here at the 78th Guam Liberation Day Parade. And like I said earlier, Jason did mention about that uh, that contest. Yes, so we have, we'll be posting up our uh, People's Choice uh, con uh, contest. We're going to be taking pictures of the floats, and all you have to do is uh, go on our Facebook around 12 o'clock-ish, and we'll post those photos of the floats. And all you do is just uh, go like and comment, and the most likes uh, towards the end of the day will have the People's Choice. All right, everybody, Jason Salas here again, and it, an unbelievably emotional and sound. As you can hear, a very, very stirring rendition of, of Ave Maria as our Blessed Mother has now made a very, very glorious appearance. And, you know, standing along the parade route, there were many of our island's uh, Catholic faithful joining in unison and, and, and cel celebrating, saying, saying, Biba Santa Maria in Camelin, Sidus Maasi. Many people brought to tears. Once again, the Santa Maria Kamlin was selected um, as this year's Grand Marshal of the 2022 Liberation Day Parade by the Mayor's Council, by the Guam Visitors Bureau. Um, now, admittedly, the Guam Visitors Bureau, a lot of people were questioning that decision initially in the first five minutes, but what could be more fitting than to have, again, the, the, sim the symbol of our island and, and our protector, our patroness, uh, the Blessed Mother who got us through so much of the trials and tribulations and the hardships and, and just the terrible emotion of the last two and a half years. And, and for so many of our, our, our venerated, honored war survivors and the people that are no longer with us, she got them through the war in these very, very, uh, the darkest time in, in Guam's history. And of course, if you haven't been able to make it out, it, once again, a acoustic version of Ave Maria being brought to you by, for a prayer by Father Junior Jesse Spence. and Ruby. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Mary, our Mother, Santa Maria Kamelin, powerful protectress and patroness of Guam, we come before you with thankful hearts for your constant care in times past. From family that have often afflicted us, the knowledge of our weakness discourages us. We have been beset by fear and temptation of every sort. Yet we are so attached to the things of this world that instead of longing for heaven, we are filled with dread at the thought of death. O oh, Mother of Mercy, have pity on your people in their distress. You are all-powerful with your Divine Son, and He can refuse no requests of your Immaculate Heart. 
show yourself a true mother to your people of Guam by being our advocate before his throne. O refuge of sinners and hope of hopeless, to whom shall we turn if not to you, dear mother? Obtain for us then, O queen and protectress of Guam, the grace of true sorrow for our sins, the gift of perfect resignation to God's holy will, and the courage to bear our sorrows and misfortunes with courage and docility. But above all, we pray, O dearest mother, that through your most powerful intercession, our island may be filled with holy hope, so that in life's darkest hour, we may never fail to turn to you in our need. But by walking in the way of the faith which has sustained so many of your people of Guam, we may merit to be united with your Son and with you in the eternal joys of heaven forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. So again, that was a very stirring benediction uh, delivered by delivered by Father, um, thanking the Blessed Mother for all she has done for our people. You know, specifically, and and as I was saying, in the last two years, and then in the 78 years that we have been liberated, and in the years before that, when Guam was under under Japanese oppression, and our, and our people had it was a very very bleak time. As Jesse and Ruby begin uh, the music once again. Um, for those of you watching right now, on the very, very hard just to put into words the gravity of the emotion uh, that is that is so palatable here downtown. It's you can just feel feel the love and feel how important this is for everybody to finally be able to celebrate once again as a community after two and a half years. But you know, d despite the rain and despite the fact that it that it is very, very overcast right now, that absolutely will not dampen the spirits of the Guamanian people. And I think that's probably the lasting message that each and every one of us here um, in attendance in person and all of those of you watching live, um, hopefully you would take with you. And just prior to the... So my friends, please keep watching because KUM's Viva coverage. Viva! Viva Santa Maria and Camelin! Viva! Viva liberation! Viva! Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. KUM's continuing coverage of the 2022 Liberation Day Parade live from Agana. It will continue right after this. Even though we're far away from home, I just want to add Annapolis, Maryland, and Yes, thank you to our friends, family, Agola Battalion, and Go Navy. Evil Evil Liberation. Liberation. Celebrating the 78th Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Happy day, Lily Hightower here in Goldport, Mississippi. I wanted to wish my friends, my family, and everyone on the beautiful island a happy and blessed 78th Guam Liberation. We love you, we miss you guys. Enjoy, take care. Viva Guam. Celebrating the 78th Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Up a day. It's Lieutenant Hightower from Keesler Medical Center in Biloxi, Mississippi. I would just like to wish my beautiful island of Guam a happy 78th liberation. Viva Guam. Celebrating the 78th liberation abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Half a day from South Carolina. Happy 78th liberation day. Beautiful island, delicious food, and generous, loving people. 1964 and 1965 hold special memories for me. Viva Guam! 
Sports. We're serving up lunchtime giveaways with Uno Go throughout the month of July on KOM News Hotspot. Watch us live on KOM TV or any device at 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday for the daily foodie trivia question. Share your answers in the comments on the Facebook live stream or by sending us a direct message via the KOM News or Uno Go Guam Instagram account. Correct answers will be placed into a random weekly drawing for the Uno Go credit of $25. No purchase necessary. Must be a Guam resident or registered Uno Go user to win. Visit uno-go.com or download the app to register and get food delivered to your home or office today. Say hello to the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app. Got a question about your finances? You've come to the right place. Bring all your accounts together, even those that aren't with us, and see the big picture, right down to the smallest detail. Unlock powerful tools like Insights and Money Map that help you save time and take control of your finances. When you connect accounts with the First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, it all starts with yes. Lunches, snacks, we got diapers for baby girl. Oh, 715, we gotta go. Uh, bread, milk, gas for work. Remember to grab Joe Boy a birthday present. Mm -hmm. Hey Molly, how much do you pay for daycare for the kids? Uh, over 600 a month, it's expensive. Did you hear about the governor's program that covers up to 675 a month for childcare? Well, that would be a lifesaver with the rising cost of everything. Check guamchildcare.com to apply. We qualified. I even booked an appointment for someone to walk me through the process. Guamchildcare.com. Okay, thanks, I'll apply today. This ad is paid for with federal funds administered by DPHSS. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on the hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com. Special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime. Plus, live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News, your news leader, the voice of the Marianas. This special edition is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Jason, Kobe Onadir and I are in the middle of all the action right down here in Hagatnya, and the parade has just started and it's really exciting. All the energy is really contagious. Everybody is so excited. And I think that we found the most excited group down here in Hagatnya. Yeah, here today we're here with Callie Cakery staff and family, and these guys are very excited for the Liberation Parade. Yeah, and we're here with Miss Callie, so I know your family has been coming out here for a while, and it's been a couple years. I mean, how long have you guys been attending this? Almost every year. We try to do this every year, as my husband wants us to be a tradition. So we try our best to get a spot every year for not only my family, but also my staff as well. All right, and so what does this mean for you guys? I mean, this is a special family event for you guys. It really is. It really means a lot. It really brings me back to my childhood, you know? And so this year, with it being free, right, it, uh, it really touches my heart to see more people coming out because of that reason, right? Um, I wish the island was much bigger because I know there was a line for, you know, a waiting line, but look at look at the outcome, even though it's raining, right? It's great. It's, it's really great. All right. Yeah. What kind of food are you guys serving up today? Kobe and I are going to grab a plate. Oh, yes, please. Come and join us. So we have red rice, steak, short ribs, um, uh, barbecue chicken, beef caligwin, um, crab salad, and then a whole bunch of desserts from the bakery. And I wanted to add, since we're on live, if you guys see our sign and you come by, we are giving away free empanadas. So because we want to give back to the community, we would like you guys to look for our sign and come in. Don't be shy. We are giving away free empanadas, and it's fresh. We're frying it here. And you heard her. Make sure you guys stop by their tent as they have great food going on. So, Kobe, what else? I mean, the excitement does not end there. What else is going on? Yes, yeah, so tonight at 8.30 p.m., we'll be having a fireworks and drone show right here in Hagatnya. Back to you, Jason.
Growing up is not really, uh, we, we suffered, but we pulled through. We pulled through, although we didn't have much, but we still survived. Teresita's earliest memories of the war reach back to when she was four years old. She's now 84. Guam's elders will always remember the atrocities of war. 78 years later, the Manamco and their families visit Fena Cave, where Japanese soldiers on this day in 1944 killed more than 30 young men and women in these caves. Memories of seemingly insurmountable tragedies surrounding Guam's liberation are still fresh on their minds. I did suffer a lot walking from, from to the camp, so that's a big disadvantage for me, but you know, but, uh, we're, we survived. We, were, we walked from Zigu all the way to Mangilo, our first campsite, and then to Manyengun. And then that's the time when the American came. She recalls those memories from when she was just six years old. She's now 85. It's these stories of resilience and remembrance that Governor Lou Leon Guerrero says inch us closer to a more complete closure. And as we sit and reflect, let's never forget the legacy of our uh, Chamorros that uh, uh, experienced the atrocities of the war and uh, make sure that we leave them with lots of love and kindness and prayers. To thank, uh, Admiral Nicholson, uh, Admiral Nicholson. A memorial mass in Sumai on the burial grounds of the lives lost that come from that land. It is the burial place of residents whose lives weren't just disrupted, but uprooted and planted someplace else. But we come here today to remember the souls of the departed buried here in this cemetery, but also to those whose lives perished during the first attack. Marie Duenas Borja Luarca was one of the many praying today on those sacred grounds where her grandfather was laid to rest. Um, if, it, if it wasn't for him and my grandmother, um, I wouldn't be here. And if it wasn't for the U.S. military saving us from the occupation, none of us would be here. So that's why we come down and pay our, pay our respects and, and try to, we want the younger generation, the next generation to be able to come down and, and continue this memorial honor, you know, for them. She and her husband and sisters have come to the memorial mass for the past eight years. It's very important for us to continue these, these memorials um, throughout the island um, because uh, it's our history, it's our heritage, it's our, it's our future. You know, it's, it's if not for the folks that gave their lives and for the military that helped save the lives of the remaining Chamorros, none of us, my generation, your generation, and those w would be here today. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News. All right, Jason Salas and Vic Fallon with you uh, roadside at the grandstand again on the emotion continues to pour out here as the parade has just begun. If you were just watching us, thank you and half a day. Happy liberation to you. A multi-unit color guard was just uh, just went before the grandstand presenting the flags of the United States. Old Glory was here as well as the colors of Guam and all five branches of the United States military, of course, the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, in recognition of the Marines who liberated Guam 78 years ago, uh, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and of course the newest branch of service, the United States Space Force. Now approaching the grandstand, uh, some of the traditionally some of the most anticipated and some of the most favorite parts of the Liberation Parade, uh, some of the marching bands we have here. And very, very fittingly, the United States Marine Corps is leading the way. And you might have heard in the background that that loud ovation was Governor Lulian Guerrero beginning the Liberation Day Parade. As a joint band featuring members of the United States Army and the United States Marine Corps. 
followed now by some U.S. Marines, including including led by a Marine in the old school, uh, the old school Class B's, the battle dress uniforms of the Marines back in the time when they liberated Guam. This is all part of Joint Task Force 671, a multi-unit multi -unit group featuring uh, several branches of military service. As you see, several units from the Guam and National Guard now passing overhead. Uh, you saw from our camera guy, Jacob Sablan, uh, a couple of the helicopters from HSC-25, the Rescue Support Squadron, which has provided so many, saved so many lives here on Guam over the decades, providing search and rescue uh, missions, finding people, helping people in distress. Two of those big uh, Navy Seahawk helicopters flew overhead, and now you see men and women that have volunteered to serve our nation and to protect Guam as members of the Guam Army National Guard and Guam Air National Guard. And now marching and uh, and reciting some of the ceremonial. This is Camp Freedom, ladies and gentlemen. And some of the young people reciting reciting the cadence as you are watching KOM's continuing coverage of the 2022 Liberation Day Parade on YouTube, on Facebook, and KUM TV 8. Celebrating the 78th Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Today, I'm Linda Ogden from Biloxi, Mississippi. I'm wanting to wish everyone on Guam a wonderful 78th Liberation Day celebration. Celebrating the 78th Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Up a day, we're the Seguenzas from Katy, Texas, wanting to wish Guam a happy 78th Guam Liberation. Celebrating the 78th Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. Eighth Liberation Abroad is brought to you locally by Pepsi. That's what I like. As the Decision 2022 race shapes up, keep it with KUAM News for all the news you need to know as you head to the polls. From weekly candidate profile analysis on the hub on KUAM News Hotspot to our online candidate directory on KUAM.com. Special features on KUAM Digital and KUAM News Primetime. Plus, live coverage of forums and debates. We're your one-stop source on every platform. Stay informed with KUAM News.